In this video, I'm going to teach you three things. Um, first, I'm going to teach you how to classify a graft triangle as scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. Um, then I'm going to teach you how to prove whether or not a graft triangle is a right triangle. And finally, I'm going to teach you how to determine whether a point is inside, outside, or on a circle when you're given the equation. All three of these things are pretty easy. So let's start with um, scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. First of all, you need to know that equilateral means um, three equal sides. All right, or I'll say three congruent sides. All right, isosceles means uh, the triangle has two congruent sides. And scalene means that there are no congruent sides. All right, just keep that in the back of your head. So um, we need the lengths of all of these sides in order to do this. So let's see, PQ, QR, PR. So um, let's do these one at a time. So I need to find the length of side PQ. I, I need to find the length of side um, QR. And I need to find the length of side uh, PR. All right, I'm changing colors because I'm going to show my work off to the side and I want to color coordinate. Okay, um, so here's what we need to do. I'm going to make a triangle that has PQ as the hypotenuse. I'm going to make a right triangle. So um, if I go like this, over and down. All right, now I have a right triangle that has PQ for a hypotenuse. The horizontal leg is, let's see, that's four, and this is five, so that's nine. And the vertical piece is three. So I could use the Pythagorean theorem to find uh, the hypotenuse, okay, which I'll call C. So you know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So that means that um, nine squared plus three squared is equal to C squared. So that's going to be 81 plus 9 is equal to c squared. So that is going to be 90. So 90 is equal to c squared. That means uh, pq is going to be the square root of 90. Now I could find a decimal for that if I wanted to, but I don't need to do that right now. So um, next I'm going to find the length of qr. So to find the length of QR, I can make a triangle out of that. Um, I can make a right triangle that has QR as the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's see. This horizontal portion is 6, and the vertical portion is 3. Okay, um, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's why I'm going to go... Um, 6 squared plus 3 squared is equal to C squared. So that's 36 plus 9 is equal to C squared. Um, so that's going to be 45 is equal to C squared. Okay, so QR is going to be the square root of 45. I mean, I could simplify that, but I'm going to leave it like it is. Or I could find a decimal, but that's not necessary. I could leave it like it is. Okay, um, so last, I'm going to find the length of PR. And I'm going to do that by finding, um, by drawing a right triangle that has PR for a hypotenuse. All right, so here is a right triangle that I can use. So I have a 3 and I have a 6 right here. Okay, so guess what? That's going to be um, 6 squared plus 3 squared is equal to C squared. 
Well, we just did that. So I already know this is going to be 45. So this is going to again be the square root of 45. Okay, so um, is this scalene, isosceles, or equilateral? Well, because two sides are congruent, QR and PR, that makes this isosceles. Okay, so this is going to be isosceles because we had two congruent sides. If all three of these were congruent, then I would put equilateral. If, if they were all different, I would put scalene. Now let me show you how to determine whether or not this is a right triangle. Um, I'm going to need the slopes of these lines in order to do this, so let me just uh, set this up. I'm going to need the slope of line uh, segment PQ. Okay, I'm going to need the slope of QR. And I'm going to need the slope of PR. Okay, um, let's go ahead and look back at the, this is the same picture that we used before. So I'm going to use these same lines, all right? Let, let's draw the same triangles that we did before. Okay, these triangles will be useful in determining the slope because we know the slope is rise over run. That's vertical over horizontal. So um, 3 is vertical and the 9 is horizontal. Now before I reduce this, let's talk about whether or not this is positive or negative. Um, can you see that this uh, PQ from left to right is going downhill? That makes this a negative slope. Okay. Um, now we need to reduce this, so this is going to reduce down to negative one third. Okay. So that is the slope of PQ. I'll show you how we're going to use that in a minute. Now let's look at the slope of segment QR. Rise over run. Okay, that's uh, vertical over horizontal. So that's going to be 3 over 6. Now, what about the sign? Is this going to be positive or negative? Well, from left to right, can you see that this is going uphill? That makes this a positive slope. Okay, so when I reduce this, I'm just going to leave it as positive 1 half. So that's the slope of QR. And now, finally, the slope of PQ, uh, sorry, the slope of PR, okay, um, rise over run, vertical over horizontal, that's going to be 6 over 3. Uh, I am going to reduce this, but is this positive or negative? Okay, and again, as I go from left to right, hopefully you can see that this is falling. That's going to make this negative. Okay, so this is going to reduce down to negative 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so negative 2. Now, the way I'm going to use these slopes to figure out if this is a right triangle is um, one word, perpendicular. Okay, maybe I'll put this off to the side. Remember that uh, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. Okay, so since perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal, um, if I see any slopes that are opposite and reciprocal, that means I'm looking at perpendicular lines. Perpendicular means 90 degree angle. That means you have a right triangle. So um, notice these right here, okay? Notice the one-half and the negative two, okay? Um, the reciprocal of two is one-half, so these are reciprocals of each other. And one is positive and one is negative. These are opposite and reciprocal. That means that QR, 
okay, and PR are perpendicular to each other. That tells me that this is a big old 90 degree angle right here. So this is a right triangle. Okay, so yes, this is a right triangle. So one more thing. Um, if I want to figure out if a point is inside, outside, or on the circle, all I have to do is plug that point in, okay, and see how big the number is. If I, get, if I plug this in and I get 40, that means it's on the circle, all right, if it makes exactly 40. If I get something less than 40, that means I have a smaller circle. Okay, that's going to put it inside the circle. If I get something more than 40, that means I have a bigger circle. That means it's outside the circle. So the bottom line is plug it in. So if I substitute um, 7 for x, so I'm going to get 7 minus 2 squared. And then if I substitute um, 2 for y, so that's y, oh, sorry, that's 2 minus 6 squared. All right, and um, I shouldn't put an equal sign because I need to wait and see. All right, I'm going to put a box with a question mark in it so I can see how does it compare to 40. Um, well, this is going to give me um, 5 squared, and this will be negative 4 squared. So how does this compare to 40? Well, that's 25 plus 16, all right, this is positive, all right, question mark, how does this compare to 40? Um, so this is going to make 41. Okay, so this is not going to be equal, all right, in fact, 41 is more than 40. This is bigger, all right? That means if this was the original circle, um, then this point, uh, 7 comma 2, is on a larger circle. That's why I'm getting a bigger number. Um, so that means that this point is outside the circle. So, okay, I think this is a typo because it says 6 comma 8 is outside. They meant to say uh, 7 comma 2. 7 comma 2 is outside the circle. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.